What is up YouTube and welcome back to another helpful guide towards the universe sim. Just thought I'd give this a go. I've seen a few comments where people have mentioned that they can't get to the medieval age or beyond. So I thought I'd do a, a basic just playthrough about what's important and what's not. So into the character selection we're obviously just using the default planet. Uh, and I'm obviously going with neutral in terms of the traits as well. Leaving all of these traits behind, there is uh, another video that goes through those. And if anybody wants a more involved one about them, then let me know in the comments and I can do that. But for now, we're just going to go neutral. By default, the settings are occasional for natural disasters, which are things like volcanoes, tornadoes, uh, blights, blizzards, heat waves, meteor strikes, and locust swarms. Wild animal attacks is what it says on the tin. Wolves. It's always wolves. It says wild animals, but it's always wolves. Also occasional. Uh, neutral aggression for exiles. That means that any exiles, which are the uh, nuggets that leave your colony to start their own colonies, uh, they will be by default neutral. And then creator points are standard. Standard, rapid, and unlimited. Obviously, standard is they are s s default slow. Rapid is they are three times as quick, and unlimited means they never run out. We're not going to play with the tutorial because that's the idea of what I'm doing here. So we'll just go straight in. Now, there is a cutscene that we'll skip. Uh, you can skip it too by holding any button down in the bottom right when it appears. You've got to wait for the loading first, of course. And then as soon as it loads, you can press and hold any button and you will skip the intro. If you've watched any of my videos, I'm sure you've seen that before. Wake up. Wake up, creator. There we go. Hold the button for three seconds and you skip. Take you straight into your home planet where you start your game. And this planet is depicted from the settings that you started with. Now, for me, and the easiest way to do this is you have to pick your epicenter, and your epicenter is your basic center of your civilization. Not, not as in geometrically, just it's the beginning, right? It's where your people start to build. Now, in terms of selecting somewhere, the best option I would suggest is to select the largest body of water on the planet that you have. So we have a 16,000 there. This one looks slightly bigger. 21,000. That's probably going to be the winner, I'm going to guess. And 17,000 there, yeah. So the largest body of water. And then with that body of water, stay away from the mountains to start. I am going to throw this round so I'm on this angle. Uh, we can see there's a meteor already there, but anyway. So, coming in to... Now, the, the sand's not an issue. Don't worry about that. And the trees. You need to have some trees, but you can plant them easy enough anyway. So, with your epicenter, you can put it anywhere you like. Now, using E and Q, you can rotate the building as you wish. Uh, let's go here, actually. Right in the middle of this green. Why not? Are you sure? Yes, I am. Take a look at your so new upon subjects. doing that, you'll immediately see that you nuggets. get your first two nuggets. Adam Largely and Eve, but they're not obviously called Adam and Eve. They are called Elu and Adahe. And the first thing they're going to do is build their Adahe residential house. The now, remember, you don't species. have to do anything with the residential houses. The I am going to talk over this guy because he's not relevant for what achieve. we're doing. So, you're first in the game. The first thing they're going to do is build a house. You can help them do that if you wish. By using your telekinesis spell and picking up the wood from trees and the stones, rock from stones. And put it in there. You can see they need five and five. We're not going to do that unless they ask us to. So the first thing you need to do is research. Research is critical and there are some items I would suggest you go straight in for. You start with primitive tools. Primitive tools. There is auto research. I would suggest you turn that off because it's not that good and it doesn't really pick in any specific order that's relevant to you. What I always go for on the most important things is you need to go for the water wheel as your first and the water flow study as your second so that you're getting a water pump and a reservoir. Water pumps pump up the water from your water source and the reservoir store it for winter and for your nuggets to drink. You need to get on that immediately because the first winter you will have problems if you don't. From there, fire of course and then into primitive cooking. 
they can eat raw food and they do it's not a problem the cooking takes you to the eatery to give you a better form of food but it's not critical for life and death water is you you can only pick five as a maximum at any one time so as well as cooking i'm going to pick fish in so first we're going for water then fire and actually i would suggest you do it that way fire into the fishing hut and then this one, just to get up to the cooking utensils, it just makes the cooking better and more resourceful for you. But eventually, what you're after here is you're getting water source and water storage, and you're getting a fishing pier, which gives you fish constantly. Again, remember that the fish can't be fished up in winter. Nothing will happen while you're on this screen, it auto pauses. So coming out of that, you'll now see at the bottom left hand corner, the water wheel has begun. Now there really isn't much to do for this stage. This stage is slow, the beginning is pretty slow. If you're doing the things that need to be done, you should find yourself waiting around. That is predominantly what the game is about. I am going to speed it up to try and to try and get the processes to happen. Importantly, you will see this is the water source we're going to be using. And until we can build a building, it's hard to show. But there is also roads in this game, and I will go into the fact that they are quite imperative for you to survive or for your city to flourish. Down in the bottom here, you can see they've got 20 food that they start with. Total cooked food is zero. Water, of course, is zero, and resources are all zero apart from stone that they are currently collecting. You can, while you're waiting, because, of course, they're not going to be getting food until after the water. You can give them food. So picking up this mammoth here or any animal in the game... And just dropping it somewhere near your settlement, you will see that gave us 30 additional food. It'll instantly die, and there'll be food next to it. They don't actually eat the item here. Look, you can see the food is this thing here. And that is the 30 food that's added to their completion. Now, what we've got is our first research finally complete, and that is the water pump. Now, before I place oh. the water pump, oh, no. and oh, before oh. I look at this quest... Um, this is where it's imperative. So as soon as you're in the building menu, you will see a road plan. This road plan is part of the game. You can't change it. It is fixed and it is quite important. You can see up here where there is a path slowly being drawn in on this line. And it looks like this one here as well. These are used to transport your nuggets about. As you move on in the game, it will turn into a proper road. It then turns into a highway and then into some sort of space flying maglev thing. If you build on it, i.e. like here, if I build on that now where it goes red, it will stop it from being used and built in the future. If I build next to it, like this, where it's still white, it will remain. The idea is you build up to and around these roads. Do not build on them if you can help it because it will make everybody and everything move much more efficiently at the end of the game. It's very important at the start to build on these roads and plan ahead. Don't just stick them wherever you like. Now, of course, the road uh, doesn't really matter for the water pump, because as you can see, it's not actually using a road per se. But I'm going to put one down there and one down there. Now, holding shift allows you to build multiple, as you just saw. If you click without holding shift, it will only allow you to place one item and then it will go off the build menu. I always start with two water pumps. I always start with two reservoirs. Remember that you need to be ready for winter. You don't want your nuggets drinking the water from anywhere else. Of course, in winter, it's very difficult for them because they can't drink from the lakes because it's frozen. So they will eventually die. Your buildings require water as well, and if you run out of water, your buildings will stop and your people will get ill or die. Oh my. Now, I'm not going well, into the quest, so I am just going to run straight through them. It appears you are to be terminated. Because oh uh, the... Never mind. Wrong envelope. You have a Help message. tips and tricks thing that I did previously oh, already covers this process. So, completing that quest, they're going to go and do their thing. This is beautiful planet. Try and what I'm going to do now, it, as we stand, we're still waiting for this research, so I'll come back as the research finishes. Because again, if you're waiting around like I am now, you are doing something right. There isn't really anything you can do to help with efficiency here. 
you can collect the resources if you wish. But as you can see, the creator points won't allow you to do much with that anyway. I mean, 40 is not oh, many trees, right? It's eight. Look at that. A we have the reservoirs now finished also. I am going to place these. Now, you need to spread them out. There is the efficiency showing there if you put them too close to each other. To be honest, that efficiency is irrelevant. You just want to spread them about because, of course, where your nuggets are going to be traveling, they need to be able to have water. So, as you can see, I am going to place these on the land and I am going to place them against a road. So, the first one I'm going to do is just there. Holding shift allows me to build multiple. I am going to put one then sort of here. And actually, I'm going to go for a third just for how this is set up. And put one there like so. Don't worry about what you build on. The nuggets will move anything and everything that they require and sort out the land as appropriate to build the buildings. But there we have it. So we now have three reservoirs to hold water and two water pumps to collect said water now i would advise that you set one of the pumps and one of the reservoirs to a priority just to make sure because you do only have two nuggets you will soon have an additional two but they are very busy now this is a perfect time to actually use your telekinesis powers and help get these done if they have the resources they will go so and build them immediately a tree so just pick now up the trees what? like so you can I keep an eye on how on much beach, body. you're not going to they spend need. another summer it just will obviously go red once you get to a limit or to the limit right so what we need now is stone so let's look for a bit of stone here's one we only need three more oh we're doing this again and that's done we? so this can now be built and with it being set as priority, somebody should come over pretty much immediately. And then with the reservoir that we want to rush as well, I will do the same. It's important to make sure that your infrastructure is solid throughout. Because if it's not so solid at the start... If it's not solid at the start, then later on you will be chasing your tail... And that is no way to play this game. It's always a good idea to build more than you need to start with so that you're comfortable moving forward. Now, as you can see, water pump one is now finished. And very shortly, that should kick in and start pumping as we expect. Produced is 30, as you can see there. It can't run because there's nowhere to store the water. So this is why these buildings are very important together. As soon as this is done, as you can see, the water wheel is now kicked in and this will be pumping. This is the storage here for where the water is stored and this is for all of the buildings and any machines or processes that are required. This side is the drinkable water and as you can see, it is much slower. From the very start, you can see maximum of seven. So seven duplicates, no, nuggets, can come and drink from this at any one time once they do it'll have to refill again we have the fishing pier complete that means we can now get some food coming in apart from winter on a regular basis so again i'm going to throw down two of those now one of these set as a priority and you can either pause or leave the other one to get done in time at the minute though we only have four people and of course we don't have the ability to man all of these things now the water wheels don't require any workers the reservoirs don't require any workers the fishing pit does the engineering hut which is very important and coming up next also is very important now of course i'm supposed to be finishing this quest but i'm not going to keep this in so we'll move on from here to the next stage so coming back now we have moved a little bit further on and by a bit further on i've done this old one toolkit which of course is the Engineering hut. Now, the engineer's hut is important. In fact, it's imperative. It's mandatory. You will not have a decent settlement unless you have an engineer's hut covering every building that you currently have. So that one there, you can see the circle covers everything we've built so far. Anything outside of that circle will fall down and be destroyed and not built again. Now, we also have both of these finished as well. Remember to assign somebody to the task. Another happy worker. 
You don't have to do it to all of them. But for the food at least, I would suggest that you do. Don't worry about the quest here. I skipped it on purpose. Including the temple. It's always a good idea. You can see I've got a lot of points there. That's just because I'm speeding it up for the video purposes. But realistically, you want to get at least one person praying to give you some points coming in. Unless you're going to go the bad god way and you're going to actually use grind people up to get the points from there. Obviously, the maximum we can have at the minute is 100 per person. Uh, or 11 per minute, if you're being nice. So we've got food coming in, we have water coming in, we have water storage, or at least we have, yes, we have all three finished. Now looking down here, we can see we've got 44 food. Water is good, coming in at 60, a rate of 60, and stored is 60 out of 90, with some wood stored as well. Now, as part of the process, we have unlocked the eatery. You can, of course, build this if you wish. But it's not imperative because they will eat the raw food anyway. It's not as efficient, but it also saves work. So as you're actually learning to progress, a warehouse is important, of course, and the hospitals. Town hall, farms, and hunting. Hunting gives you food all year round. The other buildings for storing and stuff are important. If you have a good set of resources and everybody's happy and you're okay, you can choose an eatery. But I usually ignore them at the beginning because they are not critical. What is critical is making sure you have at least one engineer working. Otherwise, your buildings will fall down. Again, at this point, we just need to wait for the research to happen. There's nothing for us to do. You can see it's getting cold. Looking at this temperature gauge up here, you can see it's about one degrees now zero. Winter is coming, as goes for that very popular TV show. Um, but without the tower to tell us what the weather's like, we don't know it yet. But of course, it is coming. And when the winter comes, all of this if will you freeze. Haven't been building In fact, that was nuggets, perfect timing. Have to drink leftover bath water this winter. So now you your fishing hooks have stopped for creator? winter. If not, your, fish, your water pumps with your have stopped for winter. Solid will probably your reservoirs you to... have the stored energy in the, in the form of water, both drinking and for use for the buildings. It will continue to filter the drinking water from this left-hand storage, but you have to survive winter now with the food that you have and the water that you have. This is why the water pumps and the reservoirs are critical to start with. So remember, water, reservoirs, Winter is here, food creator. from a, a fisherman's hut, for you. Hmm. and then the engineer's hut for keeping your buildings you. upright. Next on the research list to do, I would go with the clothing because... It unlocks the accessories and clothes for them, plus it gives them some more health, which means they are going to live longer and they are safer. Watchtowers for defense is always a good idea. Uh, remember, though, that they do decrease the negativity or increase the negativity of your nuggets quite significantly. But depending on what game you're playing or what type of game you're playing, defense is always a good way to go. Calendar is the forecast tower, just to give us an idea of what's happening and what uh, negative effects are coming i.e. the disasters and of course burial is critical as well because you need to bury corpses so they don't go bad moving over then to material refinement which will give us a stone refinery and the wood refinery for making planks and bricks after that we'll go here so spring is here the snow Look will go and my eyes will feel much better Worry, Looking at the research I completed so far, we have completed the town hall. Town hall is good because it means you don't you have to in time on your own. place the nuggets me. in specific jobs. You can get that done automatically for you. So I want to put that down like so. Remember, as you saw there, I am continuing to follow and pay attention to the roads and not move them. Wrong. You can see the roads are increasing with this gravel track here. And over time, this will become... Uh, tarmacked and then futuristic there are cars in this game every nugget can have a vehicle 
they can't use a vehicle and left unless they can use a road so if you cover all of the roads the whole vehicle and the speed buff that you get at the very end of the game or the middle to the end of the game is irrelevant resource management we have warehouses warehouses don't have a limit to their space of what they can actually hold so you can't see a circle around it but you need these spread about as reasonably decent as possible you can control what goes in them uh, but I've never found a need to do so I'm actually gonna put one right on this corner here there's a lot of trees to remove unfortunately for them but it will work so again a nice spread around the whole base that one can be used for the foods coming from there and any trees that they chop down in the woods this one can be used for stuff that I build over here and that one the same so it's just moving on and just keeping these things up and running Defense tower. I'm not going to build any defense towers. You know what they're for. They are for defense. And I am going to build a hunter's lodge though. Just so that I know. As I've said, we've got food coming in. So the fishing piers will give you food for spring, summer and autumn. Or fall, depending on where you're from. Uh, but in winter, you won't get any food. However, the hunting lodge will give you food all four seasons of the year. Then going into the same thing as well. Hospital... It is exactly what it says on the tin, right? You don't want your people to get sick, but if they do get sick, you need a way to keep them from dying. Does that doctor really have a license? So at least one hospital to start with is critical. Hospitals require herbs, though they will be collected automatically, so don't worry there. The town hall is now completed, and for the last time, we can select an actual person, the governor. Picking a governor will mean that then from this point forward, all jobs will be handled automatically based on the ratio here. So Nugget Auto Assignment, I would suggest going straight to 90%. It always seems to end up going to 90% anyway. Effectively what this is going to do, the governor will look at your total population that we have 15 and only allow 90% of that to be used to run any of the jobs or tasks that need to be done. Always leaving 10% as laborers. Laborers do the bulk of the work, moving things around, transferring, delivering, etc. 10% laborers seems to be a good amount. Obviously with these low numbers, we've technically only got 1.5 people spare as a laborer. But we don't actually have the other like 13 people nuggets worth of space so it's fine i would suggest go into that the very best you could do 85 percent or 90 percent i wouldn't go any lower than that because you'll find you'll never have enough people to manage your building pace and of course with the calendar finished that means we get the forecast tower which you can stick anywhere you like you don't need to be near, near, near a road all of your meddling will make when's it this fi when this is finished of course we will get creator. then a calendar at the top along with warnings regarding natural disasters and temperatures freezes heat waves etc with ancient burial now complete we can build cemeteries now it's important that cemetery does have a radius and the undertaker that works in the cemetery will only collect corpses within that radius now here is another example of the roads so you can see there is a road here that goes all the way around and then a little noggin that sticks out as i'm calling it that is its technical term it is a noggin if i place this here it will stop this noggin part of the road being built it will not stop any of this being built because the actual building is not on it It'll only stop the part of the road that is actually being built. I wouldn't suggest you do it on the actual interlinking parts because it will block that main road then. But this little noggin really isn't that relevant, so I am going to put that there. Now, always make sure to keep the cemeteries ahead of your building. We've got just the range, as you can see there. But, of course, what I'm going to do is there is another noggin of road going up to here. So I am going to actually stop that from being built and put one here because it's too perfect of a position. Now we have our entire civilization and the outskirts of it covered by cemeteries. So anybody dying will of course be picked up and buried and cremated. No one will go bad 
rotten, plagued, whatever you want to call it, and make your civilization ill. On to the research. There are many things you can pick from here, but of course education is our next in line. If you play in a harder level where you've got the environment set on difficult or regular, so you get natural disasters much more frequently, a shelter bunker could be a good choice. But with it being the standard practice, I'm not going to bother for now. So moving on, we're going to go straight for geology, which will give us the iron mines. And then into mining for the gas mines. We are going straight down the middle here. Effectively, medieval is right here. In fact, if you click on the medieval badge, it will take you there and show you. Medieval is basically everything up to where you actually decide what electric you wish to do. Glass blowing, oil and the like are all classed as Stone Age. So we've got mining in place. Now there are a few around here that unlock upgrades to buildings. So Medieval Hort's quarries to get the stone mine so you get infinite stone. But to be honest I've never had a problem with stone. Wood yes, stone no. So this isn't really one to go for obviously the discovery point ones to make them move faster and have more stamina is good but is it worth rushing that this one's good for botany so going into botany means that your hospitals work better so going botany and then antiseptics to give them five extra years on their life is definitely worth it and this is where i'd probably go you could of course go education straight into the health and then go down the mining road is a much better option. Again, these are just unlocking additional slots and upgrades of buildings. Nothing new per se. Uh, Recreation-wise, it's local business. But we're not having a problem with our happiness yet because we're not chucking down loads of negative buildings. So there's no point rushing that. What we're rushing for to get to the medieval age is actually infrastructure and supporting of what the nuggets need. So coming back now, the education research has completed and this allows us to build a school that will eventually be upgraded into a university. Now the school does two things in the university also. So let's just find a place to put this. Just there. So the school will educate your nuggets. By default, all nuggets will go to school first. That is the first thing they will do when they are born. And they will work to be educated. Educated nuggets are required from the medieval age and beyond to do most of the tasks. If you don't have schools and you don't have enough educated nuggets, your city, village, town, settlement, whatever you want to call it, will grind to a halt. This is the point and a very important point that if you want to get past the medieval age, you need to have educated nuggets, not your normal nuggets. Now, when moving to any other planets, moons, or anything like that, remember to put the schools down, or universities if you've got them. Because even though you send over educated nuggets, the new nuggets being born won't be educated without schools. Now, schools also give you some discovery points. As you can see here, school discovery points ten every 10 minutes is zero. When that's finished, that will of course go up. Discovery points allow you to learn all of these special yellow traits on the ends of your researchers. Discovery points are important and there are a lot of buffs and bonuses that you get from them that are critical. By the end, I would imagine you would have learned all of them, but a school and the university gives you a buff to that as well. Stone refinery and wood refinery, as I have mentioned, these are buildings that you are going to need. Medieval requires for planks and bricks, not stones and logs. So over here where there's a space, I'm going to shut these down. There's not much you can do with a few logs, unless you're going and for that rustic look, we are creator. One of each to start with. And you can see there is actually a red house with a crack through it. 
That's telling me that the engineer's hut does not cover this area. If I click on it, you will see that yes, in fact, we have buildings outside of the area. So immediately going straight back to the engineer's hut and making sure to build these in line with your base or settlement growing. Paying attention to the fact that they will build their houses wherever they sod in light, unless you use this spell right here, which again is explained in the other video, but just as a caveat, it is holy ground. This forces them to build in this area so that they don't build just all over the place. And then if they build outside of an engineer's hut, it will of course fall down. Research is not quite finished, but we are going to continue going down here. Now, glass blowing is definitely next on the agenda. You can do this speleology, which unlocks the expedition camp, but you'll find that that will be a quest that you require, have to do anyway. You can't learn it, as you can see down there, until you complete the root of the problem, which is the quest. So we'll skip past that and go through here. Uh, mining next, followed by glass blowing, and after glass blowing, there is oil jack. Now, it's not a bad idea to take the fire station before you go to the oil jack, because having the fire engines and fire men and women on the planet just save you a job when it gets a bit manic. Obviously, like this one you saw, very simple, bit of rain, and it put this fire out. But you don't want to be doing that all over the place and wasting your points for that as well. You will start to see these as we get near the medieval age and this is the upgrade to allow us to actually upgrade this building. Of course, as I said, there's no way we have those resources yet. Planks, we need the wood refinery. Bricks, we need the stone refinery. And for iron, we need an iron mine. So we can't afford it yet, um, but you can start it if you wish, I guess. There's no point. I would suggest not to. Mainly because you want to keep an eye on your resources and know where they are going. Putting your cursor over any of the resources down at the bottom shows you how many you need, 66, and how many you have, 134. If the number above that required for construction is higher than the stored, then you've got a problem. And as you can see there, required for construction 6, we have no planks. We have no bricks but require 15. They will start, though, as soon as these buildings here are completed. These buildings don't require the resources they produce, so nice and simple logs and bricks. So, coming back and getting close now, we are at the point where I said you can see the Speleology's quest. We have it. The quest is the root of the problem, and all you have to do is kill the vine. Uh, standard practice, really. I'm sure everybody's already done that by now. Lightning is definitely the best way to kill it. There is a chance that it will set fire to the area. So be warned about that. But of course, the, o the other option is using the fire spell, which of course, if you've unlocked it by now, uh, will definitely set fire to everything. You can, as you've seen in the series before, where can I wasn't allowed to use... Can someone get that a fresh pair of underwear? Where I wasn't allowed to use uh, offensive spells... Uh, throw stones at it using election. your telekinesis. And another imperfect candidate elected. And there's a perfect example of that. So we can just use the triple spell and put that out, no problem. And then of course, with spellology being completed, you can then build the expedition camp. Now I'll be honest, ever since 1.0, the expedition camp has never really been warranted for me because what you use it for is getting the discovery points and the discoverable points from your schools and universities, if you build them as you're supposed to, is more than you'll ever need. So I would suggest that you either do the schools or you do it um, the expedition way. But of course the schools are a must simply because you need the educated nuggets. So with that now completed, we go over to electricity. And this is basically coming to the end for the medieval stage. Um, I'm going to ignore oh, these quests call. because we A don't tough need learning to experience do that. is exactly what that young nugget needs. So upon learning the electricity spell, you will get the Tesla quest, the inventor's request. And this is simple. Again, mentioned in the previous, but we'll go through it very quickly. 
All you need to do is put down a battery. The battery placement is irrelevant. It does not matter where you place them on the entire planet. They will work fine. We then, of course, have to find and retrieve the rare components. Flying around the planet, you will see bright pink, yellow, green, smoke, whatever you like. Using F will take you straight back. All you need to do is find three of these. So I'll do that very quickly. And the final one. It's best just to zoom around the planet. You will spot. You can't miss them. They're reasonably simple to find. Just making sure that you drop them. Upon doing so, we'll complete that immediately. And the quest will obviously tell you to charge it with your lightning, which is fine. And there we go. That is the electricity spell done. Now you get to pick what type of energy you wish to do again that is already explained in the previous one though as a tutorial to get you to the medieval age you should always kind of be going wind energy i would suggest never go kinetic energy it is terrible so wind energy for ease combustion energy for efficiency um, and kinetic energy not unless you want to be in a lot of pain then Tudor Architecture is your you next to one. So we of the course have learned the wind all of its resources. And gone into Tudor Architecture, which has now put us into the Medieval Age. From here, you follow the same traits. You can go back, of course, and get the upgrades as you wish. It is important to make sure that you keep Even up with your water it. supply. That is I your income of water by using water pumps. Era. And also making sure that dragon. you spread the reservoirs around I so agree. that they have the it's ability to get you. to them. The building's got a makeover. From a basis of the game, this is where I'm going to leave it. Any questions, comments or concerns, let me know. Going into the next era to the medieval age through to the modern age uh, and then from the stone age. If this is helpful and you want to see the same sort of thing through all of the stages, then please do let me know. At this point, I'm going to end it here, so thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, join me on Discord, subscribe for more, take care, goodbye.